All right. So I had a great trip out to New Mexico and uh, spent the week planning, got all of my planning for Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights, and Thursday mornings done through the end of the school year. So I was good. It was a refreshing trip, inspirational, and uh, it looks, made me excited for the months to come. Um, got back late last night and went back, went to bed and got up this morning. And um, I, I can see already that, that um, somebody has judged me. Yeah, because um, I intentionally misspelled the first slide of the sermon, but somebody judged me and fixed it. However, however, in the process, they have missed one of the incorrect typos that I had included in it. Does anybody know what it is? Matthew is still misspelled. There's two T's in Matthew. So whoever tried to help me out, I appreciate you trying to help me out by fixing the slide that I intentionally misspelled. But um, uh, today's sermon is about judging. I got here um, a little bit later than usual. I usually get here before six, but this morning I slept in a little bit later. I, knew that, I already knew what, you know, what I was going to do and was ready for it. Um, but as I pulled up a little bit after six, there was a car parked in my spot that I normally park in. By the way, it's not my spot. You're welcome to park in at any time. I actually chose that spot that I normally park in because it's sort of an awkward spot, and I thought probably I don't want guests or whatever to have to, to park in that spot, so that's why I chose that spot. I probably could have done better, choose the one farthest away from the, the, the church would have been fine. But anyway, this morning I get here and there's a truck parked in my spot, crooked, pulled in crooked in my spot. And I thought, well, I wonder what is, what is the deal there? That's, uh, not only is it unusual to see a car there at this time of the day, but they're also parked crooked. And as I got out of my car and I'm walking toward the office, I'm thinking, I wonder if there's somebody in the car. And I'm, as I'm looking... Then out comes Bobby Forrester uh, coming out of this little back door right here, and he meets me there and says hello, and um, he says he had showed up to start the organ um, because they like to turn the organ on several hours before they actually play it. It makes it sound better. If you don't give it time to warm up, it, it may have some issues. So get, he, he's such a good husband. He got up early this morning, came out, started the organ up, and got it warmed up. I'm so glad, though, that in my mind, I, I didn't get judgmental thinking because I could have could have gone, what is this car doing here? And why is it parked there? And why did they park crooked and all of that? So, I, you know, we, we had a little good conversation. And I know walked into the office, sat down and realized, oh goodness, I hope that, that Bobby didn't judge me. Because as I looked, I realized I had nicked my chin this morning and uh, I had a piece of toilet paper stuck to my chin the entire time I was talking to Bobby. And he didn't say anything. I don't even know if he noticed, but uh, I wasn't expecting to see anybody here at church when I got here at six o'clock this morning. But uh, it's funny that uh, that goes right along with uh, what we are talking about today. From uh, the Gospel of Matthew, 7th chapter, we're still looking at the Sermon on the Mount. And here's what Jesus said in this part of his sermon. Don't judge others, and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own. How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite! First get rid of the log in your own eye, and then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, Sometimes Jesus' words in this passage are misunderstood. Saying defensively, judge not, lest ye be judged, has become one of the common comebacks that people will use when they're challenged on their bad behavior. When someone points out that they've got a piece of toilet paper stuck to their chin, they might say, judge not, 
lest ye be judged. But did Jesus really mean we cannot call people out on their bad behavior at any time or even make judgments at all? I mean, it feels good for us to be able to say to others, don't judge me, don't judge me. But that's not what really, really what Jesus said said. In fact, if you keep reading in this chapter and you skip down just a few more verses, you will find that he actually teaches that you should sometimes judge, and he gives instructions about how to judge. He says, you, we, you can know if somebody is a false prophet based on, by judging their behavior, by judging them by their, by their fruits of their actions. So he's actually giving instructions about how to judge. So obviously Jesus is not telling us that we shouldn't make any judgments about people at all. We have to have wisdom. Listen, when when someone comes to your house and wants to date your daughter, you better have a little wisdom and make a judgment. Is this person the right person? Are they, is this someone safe for my daughter? If they show up, if somebody shows up to, to, to wants to take my daughter out on a date and they've got a pot leaf on the front of their t-shirt um, and maybe they're acting a little odd and off, I'm not going to make a little judgment call there and say, you know, this is not the person I want my daughter going out on a date with, right? So yes, sometimes we do need to make some judgments. Good judgment is actually a virtue that the Bible applauds. It's a valuable asset in life, and we need to have it. Good judgment is based on facts, facts about people's behavior. Being judgmental is rushing to judgment about someone negatively based on limited information. So, for instance, someone, you might say, Someone parked crooked in their parking spot. That is a fact. No, there's no debating that. They're crooked. But we need more information in order to know what that all means. Maybe they showed up early that morning and there was nobody here and they just pulled in real fast so they could run in and click the organ on and run out. And it doesn't matter if they're parked a little bit crooked. But someone who rushes to judgment might say, huh, someone parked crookedly. That person must be a bad driver. You see, that's that's being judgmental. Or they might say, that person is inconsiderate. Or they might say, that person must be drunk. All this because they parked crooked? Well, you don't know. You don't know what's really going on. You don't know the story. Are you being judgmental? When we are judgmental, there's also often a feeling of superiority that is attached to it. I would never park like that. I would never do that. That's not the kind of person I am. I am much better than whoever this person is who has acted that way. You see the difference between being a, using good judgment and being judgmental. I mean, the, the meaning of Jesus' teachment, teaching is pretty clear. Don't be judgmental. And he even uses a funny illustration to drive home the point. He says, why worry about the speck in your friend's eye when you've got a log in your own? We all have issues, and we are all usually pretty gracious with ourselves. You say, well, I I might have this fault or this problem, but it's okay. We give ourselves some slack about our behaviors. My problems aren't that bad. But then when it comes to our neighbors, my neighbors' behaviors are really annoying. They're really disappointing or they're even appalling. We don't usually offer them the same kind of grace we offer ourselves. And we need to learn to be gracious with others. We need to learn to give people the benefit of the doubt. We need for our first thought, when we see something a little off, we need for our first thought to be not to jump to how it reflects poorly on that person, but give them the benefit of the doubt until we have reason to believe otherwise. Jesus points out vividly that our sins 
are no small thing. How did he describe them in this passage? He says, you have a log in your eye. Don't jump over that fact. That's something that really struck me as I was was studying for this sermon. Jesus says, why worry about the speck in your neighbor's eye when you have a log in your own eye? Now think about that. If you saw someone today who had a log in their eye, what would you think? I mean, they probably would be lying on the ground with blood all over the place and a log sticking out of their eye, and your immediate thought would be, oh my goodness, call 911. This person needs to go to the hospital immediately. Get an ambulance here right now. This person has a log in their eye. And Jesus said, you have a log in your eye. (laughs) He's speaking in spiritual terms, but still, our own sin is so rancorous, it required Jesus to die on a cross for us. You think about that. Your sin is that bad. That's serious. But often, we want to worry about everyone else's sin, the little specks that they have, the little annoying things that they do, and we're not wanting to come to terms with the log that's in our own eye. It's more comfortable to point at other people than to look at our own problems. Jesus gives a stern warning. He said, the standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And this has at least two ramifications that I can think of. One is for now. One is for later. Now, it is this. If you are a gracious person, if if you are gracious with people, people will tend to be gracious with you. If you are looking negatively and harshly and judging people, then they they tend to give that same sort of attitude back to you. So there's an immediate benefit in Jesus' teaching here. If you will be a gracious person with your server when you're eating at the restaurant, with your children, with your family members and your friends, your co-workers, if you're gracious with them, if you will give them the benefit of the doubt and think the best of them, even when you see the worst coming out, they will tend to reflect that kind of attitude back to you. Um, And I think this also applies to that inner voice that we have within ourselves, okay? If you tend to be critical of others outwardly and verbally, then, and sometimes even if it's not verbal, even if you don't ever say your judgmental things to someone else, but you think them in your heart, you're going to tend to think that way about yourself too. If you are that critical about them, I can't believe they did that. That when you're going to be hard on yourself too. And so often we need to lighten up with ourselves and realize that nobody's perfect. We're not perfect either. It's okay. God loves us still. Don't be so hard on yourself. And that all goes back to this teaching of Christ saying, don't be judgmental. The standard by which you judge others is the standard by which you will be judged. Sometimes that judgment is your own internal judgment. But another part of this teaching, a ramification of this teaching, is something that may come later. You know, we're all going to have to stand before the Lord one day. And we're going to have to answer to the life that we lived and the behaviors that we exhibited. And that's a sobering thought, especially when you consider Jesus' words here. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. I am very thankful that the only person who is qualified to to truly judge a person is Christ Jesus. He knows what's really going on. He sees people right down to their core and who they are. He understands. You know, have you ever ever seen somebody do something and it just makes you scratch your head and you think, I don't understand why you did that. Why did you do that? That doesn't make any sense. How could any person do what you did? But you know what? Here's, here's, Here's something that struck me. 
Jesus would never say that. When you stand before, when people stand before him on the last day, he's never going to say, I don't know why you did that. He's not going to be confused by it in the utmost. It could be that he would say, well, what you did was affected by the way you were brought up or by some deep wound that you had that led you to act that way. He's going to know that. He's also going to know when that ain't true, when you just were bad and you just did this because of evil. You're not going to, he's not going to be confused. A judge is one who has wisdom, who can look at a situation and, and understand it and make a good judgment about it. And the greatest judge of all is Jesus Christ. He's not going to be lost or confused by anything. When you stand before him, he's going to know when he should cut you some slack and when he should hold you accountable. Absolutely. That's the kind of judge he is. He is the only being in existence who has the capability of judging us in total honesty, with absolute justice, where grace and justice are absolutely two sides of the coin. And if you're the ones trying to walk around and act like him by being judgmental, it's not going to go over well when you stand before the Lord. But I want to get back to this thing. We've got logs in our eyes, people. We have logs in our eyes. What are we going to do about that? I mean, if you saw someone with a log in their eye, you would rush them to the hospital. And we're all walking around with spiritual logs in our eyes. Does that make sense? We have a problem, and it needs to be dealt with. That is why Jesus came. I'm not judging you, because I've got a log in my eye too. What are we going to do about these things sticking out of our spiritual eye? Jesus came to take care of that problem. The biggest log is not the little bad behaviors that we do. The big log is the fact that we have turned away from God and we are chasing after our own selfish ambition. It's not the little sins. It's the big sin. Jesus came to address that. For we have all fallen short of God's glorious standard. We've all sinned. And the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So call on Jesus and be saved. Believe in him with your whole heart and confess that he is Lord with your words. And take up your cross and follow him every day. He will take care of the log in your eye. He'll take care of everyone else's log too, if they will let him. You don't worry about that. 